Okay, good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information, I believe, is Greg Durza. Hi. Um, my name is Greg Durza, and I own a um, barn shop called Barn Out Back here in Hadley at uh, 30 Lawrence Plain Road. I am um, now ready to have a permanent sign by the road. So um, I wanted to show you some of the, the design of the actual um, sign. So this, the sign will be wood and we'll have um, our logo in metal letters. Um, the base will be a metal post, like a um, like for a um, like a fence fencing um, with a crossbar, and um, the sign will be forty eight inches round. Um, there will be two sides, and the at the highest point will probably be seven feet. Um, the metal letters will be like this. These are made out of um, metal and they were, they were um, like forged and cut out. So it'll be the same, same exact um, logo that we have on the website and in all our marketing. Um, where it will land on are so we have the the house is right here and the barn is back here and then this is the driveway oh, i'm i'm backward this is the driveway <laughs> and um this is where the sign will be by the road um 20 feet um is that where the sign is today greg yeah it, it'll be like pushed back, I think a little bit more. I just have to measure the 20 feet due to the, the guidelines um, back from the road. Okay. But yes, it'll be in the same location as the, the temporary sign. Okay. It's a wooden face fine sign you said on a metal post? Yeah, wooden face, metal post, metal um, letters. Okay. Um, and two different, two different sides. Yeah, well, obviously two sides, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it'll probably be made out of like more of a barn, barn wood kind of thing mm -hmm. um, to keep it more natural and in, in vogue with what I'm doing in the barn with like repurposed things. And um, so it won't be glossy. Um, it will be more of a, a country look, but the, the, the letters are all in, in black. Okay. Any other comments? Lighting. Lighting will be, I, I don't want to spend a lot of money on like getting electricians out there. So it'll probably be um, solar. So I'll have solar spotlights, but they will go from the road back. So they're not to impede with any, you know, traffic coming where there would be like a light in their face. So it'll be um, pointed towards the sign to the back of the property instead of towards the front of the road. Good, thank you. Yeah. If they're, if they're solar, they could potentially be on all night. Correct. Um, I'll, I can look into getting, if there's a problem with that, I can look into um, getting something that times. Yeah, that might be, th something, might be something to look at, I think. Yeah, okay. A good idea, yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. I know with the, the lighting that I have in the barn right now, it goes off at midnight, so. Yeah. If you've got a cloudy day and you put it on all night, you're not going to have any light the next night. That's true, yeah. You know, so. Okay, any other comments? Motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the sign uh, with solar spotlighting on timer. Second. I just want that on. 
That's for Brian Outback. You said it. That's the name of Greg. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. We have a motion. A second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Good luck. Thank you. We'll get a letter to the building inspector, but uh, you know, I think he's listening anyways. But okay. Uh, okay. All right. So I'll send in the the paperwork for that. Right, because you know, you see, to get the building from, still need to get the building permit and stuff like that through him. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yep. You're welcome. Next up, Bill. I had Michael. How you doing? I'm a. Uh... Michael Weinzig from uh, Weinzig Evergreen Nursery on Route 9 in Hadley. Um, as you've known, we met with you uh, early in the spring, uh, late winter, we redid a building, um, a three bay garage that we turned into a retail building. We changed our logo um, and we're looking at putting up a new sign out front um, off of Route 9. Um, we do have uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, um, and I can certainly email it to you, but this is what's been proposed to us, uh, just a prototype. Um, it's six feet tall by about 10 feet wide. Um, the lighting, we're not certain yet, uh, possibly do up lighting. And then I don't know if this white part where there's two lines of uh, where we can put letters, if that would be lit from the inside. But also, I don't know if there's, you know, certain bylaws yeah, that you, we would you, have to... You, you can't light it from the inside, Mike. Okay. All right. Light it from the outside. Okay. So then in that case, it'll probably be all wooden. Um, and if we're able to do up lighting on a timer, we would most, most likely, you know, go that route. Um, do a stone wall in front of it as well, which we'd have a landscaper come and do. Um, and I guess our only concern really would be with the construction coming up. I mean, it looks like it's far enough off the road. It'd be pretty much in place of where the building that we took down, That's it's the idea spot where we would want to put it. Um, but I just don't know. I, I need to put it up and then, you know, in another year, they come and take it down. I'm going to say it's not real critical for us right now, but for your sake of your business, try to find out how far they're taking back so that exactly what you just said, you don't have to put it a spend up. I mean, that's a nice looking sign, yeah. especially with the stone, stone and everything like that. You don't want to put up and have to move it again six, eight, eight months from now or 10 months from now. Right, right. You know, so um, I'm not sure who in the DOT in Northampton or wherever can help you with that. I think I do have their their contact info. I, I got a letter recently, so I can okay. certainly give them a call. How much are they taking on your property? Do you know? I thought they were saying just, he stopped in numerous times, but I thought it was just a couple. Okay. Also, do we have to do anything to take down the sign that we currently have? up it's been there for it's probably the original sign you can almost see it uh right in the background i you should check with the building inspector about whether he would require a demolition permit for taking down an old sign okay that's his department that's his uh his area okay All right, so I'll do that. Um, I mean, what's the old sign made of? The old sign? Yeah. Uh, I think just plywood. I just, old, old barn. Yeah, barn. maybe you get some TNT or something. I don't think you have, I just, I just take it down, man. Yeah. <laughs> just take it down, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I think it did fall down a couple of years ago. And yeah, well, that's uh, my point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's 166 Russell, right, Mike? Correct. Okay. Um, 
Any other discussion, comments, questions? Motion to approve. Uh, do are we actually approving it? Or do, where? Yeah. Well, I don't are think anyone has any. Everybody seems to like it, but are you asking for a formal approval at this point, or you just want to know that you're clear to proceed? Uh, well, I mean, we'd like to have it up before we, you know, our spring oh, okay. season. So yeah, official. Uh, okay, so I'll make a motion to approve. Second. And you the uh, lights on timer. Well, yeah, externally lit on timer. Right. All, all in favor? Any other comments? Aye. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Oh, no. Was that Mark? Aye. Oh, okay. I thought you said so. <laughs> 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 Motion approved unanimously. Good luck, Mike. I'll, I'll inform the building inspector of what we just uh, did. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate I mean, it. Obviously, then you can go forward to him and whatever you got to do with that. Okay. Thank you very much. And next up is Barbara and Tom Henderson. Hi, can you, you can hear us? Yes. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get the window to, there we are, hi. Um, we're ready. You, it, where we wanna put in an accessory apartment in our house. We live on one safer lane, um, which is just off a of Rocky Hill, right next to farm lane, okay? okay. Uh, we're the only house on the street. It's a dead end. Uh, we currently have uh, what's called a mother-in-law's apartment with a uh, kitchenette that only has a sink and a refrigerator and a bedroom and a bath. And it's all been approved. Uh, we moved in seven years ago. It's all been approved on septic for the amount of bedrooms and bathrooms. Uh, basically, what we want to do is uh, just add... Uh, a stove and a dishwasher in the existing uh, kitchen area and put a uh, door into our kitchen uh, that would allow privacy to our side of the house. Uh, the, the current mother-in-law apartment has a door for privacy to th those two, two rooms. Locking door. It's a locking door and there's a common area off the garage that has laundry and a closet. And that's where all of us would enter and then we'd each go to our private uh, things. So there's no changes to the floor plan. It's the same size, uh, approximately 560 square feet. I, I have the details. We sent everything. We sent everything in. So it's, it's a small apartment. Um, go ahead, question. No, no, I, no I, but we, we, have, we still have to go through the public hearing process. Yes, we understand that. Okay. Um, and so, so that's all that's taking place. Um, we have a, a large driveway uh, that's in existence, and it's only one car at the moment that's going to be using it. Uh, basically, it's going to be my daughter and her partner, her, her, uh, her boyfriend. The two of them are going to be living there. Okay. Have you lived there for a long time? Seven years. So you, you have some kind of a plot plan of your property? Yes, we, we sent, sent that in. in. Okay. Um, okay. Um, did you send them an application, Bill? We uh, sent in an application, a plan of the existing space in the house, a plot plan, the septic plan with the certificate of compliance, and we have printed out two sets of labels that we obtained from the assessor's office. Oh, perfect. You got everything. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> So you, you have the labels yourself? Yes, we, we're ready with those. Okay. Um, easiest way, because I need I need the labels myself to mail out the stuff. Mm -hmm. And with everything else, we can take care of what you sent in. Uh, we can mail them to you. I, I can drop them off at the town hall tomorrow. Or we can drop them off. Yeah, put them in an envelope. Yeah. And just put... Uh, planning board on it and drop it in the mailbox outside. They'll put it in our mailbox in, a, in the town hall and I'll pick it up and take it from there. Okay, thank you. We'll do that tomorrow. Okay. 
and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll print out the application. There'll be there is a three hundred and fifty dollar filing fee. I will email that back to you. Get you got the email right, Bill? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I sent everything around on uh, <clears throat> January eleventh. Okay, I got it. Yes. Okay, I will sign the form. With the, with the information and, and email it back to you, and then you can just bring it to the town hall and pay the fee. Anytime between now and a public hearing. Okay. The public hearing will probably be scheduled for, um, today's the 19th. How about February 16th? And that's a Zoom? Uh, yes. It has to be a Zoom because the state's not allowing us to do any public hearings. Right. So if we put a check for the three hundred fifty dollars in with the labels. Will that no, be okay? No. I will. I will email you the application form signed with the filing fee. Take that, and then you can just put a check in with the with the application and put it in the same mailbox you put the filing fees in. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Our daughter was on your softball team thirty years ago. Jim. Was he a good coach? <laughs> oh, oh, she was on my team? Yeah. Kara. Oh, yeah. okay. Like 30 years ago. Yeah. That's a long, I know. <laughs> Purple and white team. <laughs> yeah, well, she's going to be probably living here, so. Okay. Okay. We're all set then? All set. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next up is Judy with an I. Judy's iPad, you there? Well. Sorry. Hello, Bill Hello. Dwyer. It's John Rogers and my wife, Judy. How are you folks? Good. We, we just wanted to stop in to, to, to listen tonight. Okay. Welcome. Cool. Thank you. And uh, then uh, next would be Pat. Actually... I'll identify myself. I'm Pat Patnard with the Jones Group. Um, I was just about to listen in as well uh, because my understanding was that the building commissioner was going to be at your meeting tonight, but I don't see him on the screen anywhere. Um, I had a question um, relating to the uh, widening of Route 9 and the takings that are going to happen. Um, I have a property at 206 Russell next door to the motel where the plaza burnt that I've been marketing for a long time. And we have a buyer uh, to put up a new, um, but we're in the process of, uh, it, it's complicated because it's still part of the commercial condominium with the, with the motel. It's all one piece and it needs to be divided and the condo association needs to be dissolved. Um, so we're creating a, uh, a parcel that has a uh, stands alone uh, and it meets all the zoning requirements, but we're going to lose 10 feet of width from the street on the north side of Route 9. So, Pat, can I, can I just interrupt here for a sec? Sure. Um, your, uh, the building inspector forwarded your email with the attached plan to me okay. and I forwarded it to the rest of the board. And we were going to just take it up briefly a little later on. Okay. Uh, frankly, this, ha and I'm sort of making an executive decision here that um, we need to bring town council in because we've had multiple questions from appraisers and property owners about um, the impact of the takings on various aspects of zoning. And frankly, it's just too complicated to try to do. Uh, and we, we have to, we have to, we have to get some uh, some higher level advice before we can uh, before we can give 
any give anybody any help here. If I could also shed some information on this, Pat, um, irrespective of the taking of Route 9, when the motel was created in conjunction with the former campus plaza, the motel does not have the parking on its parcel to meet zoning. And it's shared parking with the campus plaza. So although you may have two conforming parcels for zoning, you do not have for zoning dimensions, you do not have a conforming parcel on the uh, motel for parking. They require parking from the former campus plaza that was shared to meet the zoning parking on the motel. So we told us to the former owner once before, you can't separate the two parcels because you need your parcel needs parking space from the old campus plaza to be conforming. So unless you can show that you, the, the motel now meets parking, I won't sign off on that part, on that division because that was part of the site plan approval when we approved it many years ago. I'm sure Joe and Bill remember that now. Very well said, Jim. I, that's right on. You've got a good memory. I, I appreciate that input. Um, just as a footnote, the parcel that we're attempting to carve out um, is smaller than what the plaza used to occupy. So, okay. the, so the motel actually gains area, that lot. We don't and know. What, we'll, what, you, what you'll need to do is show that the campus plaza, that the motel meets all the requirements of zoning on its own parcel of parking, green space, and, and coverage, and that the other parcel still has enough to meet zoning. If you can do that, I would sign off on it, but I'm not sure you're going to be able to do that because they required quite a bit of the parking area on a campus plaza to meet that. Mm -hmm. And the other question you had, Pat, is that uh, ultimately there will be some compensation, just a matter of how much is uh, still in question. So you will be receiving compensation for the taking by the state. And you're kind of asking for two bites out of this apple. Number one, to receive the compensation. And number two, to, uh, to lessen the requirement of the setback. Well, we're not for a lessening. What, what I'm just trying to determine is the buyer is in the process of creating his site plan. And I don't, the, the overriding question is, if he submits for site plan approval now with the existing lot before the taking and it's approved, and then the taking occurs, he's going to lose 10 feet of green space setback from the street. Uh, is that going to be an issue once his site plan is approved, but he hasn't constructed yet? We're, so we it's a are going to, timing. we're going to have to get advice from town council on okay. whether to the extent to which we can consider future plans in approving present projects. Mm -hmm. As to parking, uh, we just changed the parking requirements for industri industrial sites. Uh, is this going to be an industrial site or is it going to be? It's not um, industrial, it's own business. No, I, okay. The project, the project proposed is retail. Well, yeah. It's actually a local business person that wants to um, have a new space, a bigger space. Okay, so I guess um, I have to kind of hold off on getting some sort of feedback um, that's a little bit more definitive after you've spoken to your council, it sounds like. Right. Well, that's this one of the things. Yeah, then, you know, then you could also be sure that the motel satisfies all the zoning requirements of its single parcel. No, I understand. Which would include lighting. And we recently had some problems with the light shining off, over on a property. And, and, you know, if we revisit this, we're going to make sure that the lighting requirements and the zoning law are uh, properly abided by. Well, that shouldn't have, I wouldn't think that would affect the new parcel because I'm just talking, I, I have no control over the motel fellow. <laughs> well, the issue is that the motel is going to have to request an amendment of its original site plan approval. 
in order to make the division of land work for your client. Okay. So it is interrelated. Okay. It's nice and complicated given all the factors here. Yeah, they, Not this, too this, often this, that you dissolve uh, a condominium. The, the lighting is the least of your problems. This is okay. a little parcel, but it has lots of complexity to it that the owner of many years ago built into it. As you're oh. probably as you're probably encountering in your in your uh, trying to sell it. I I understand. I I Tony Pateras was also a client of mine many many years ago, <laughs> so I understand. Well, thank you for your input. I truly appreciate it. Okay. And I see Susan, but is that Susan Glowatsky or someone with a something for us? No, it's Sue Glowatsky. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we have a couple, uh, we have a continuation to tonight that was requested by Mike, Kevin Michelson, and he has requested another continuation to um, March 20th. Our next meeting is March 16th. So um, if there's no other comments, I'll entertain a motion to continue his, give grant his continuance to uh, March 20th. 20th, with we will be taking it up on our March 16th meeting. How does that uh, work out with a letter that the uh, Abutters Town Council uh, lawyer sent us? They're, they're requesting that we hold a public hearing tonight. However, we have a long history of granting extensions, regardless of what is the, the Abutters aren't making the decision here. The requester, the applicant is make, requesting an extension. I see no reason why we wouldn't grant it. We've granted much further extensions than this. We've had some kind, some time continue for two or three years. So what's the date we're extending it to? We're extending it to March 20. I mean, let me, uh, his request is to March 22nd. And we will have our, we will, we will continue it to March 16th, which is the third Tuesday of March. Yeah, well, I'll, so I'll make a motion to continue it to March 16th. Okay. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is con granted uh, unanimously. And I believe Mr. Kim is up. Hi, board. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so I understand uh, Bill just sent some of the members um, the the draft um, that I prepared. Um, so I guess we can just go through some of the initial changes. You know, it's funny because I I um, didn't know there was an article about this until someone from FEMA called me saying, oh, you're working on Hadley's bylaws. And so, um, and that's how I got engaged with her. And um, as I mentioned in my email to Bill and Jim, when I sent them the draft, um, that um, it was reviewed by, some of the amendments were proposed by the, um, the um, um, state floodplain manager and coordinator. And you'll see those in the comments on the right side. Um, but let's just quickly go through. I think, as I mentioned to Bill and Jim with regards to, um, Bill, can you um, give me a, the ability to share the screen? Yes, I can do that. And is there a reason you don't send it to everybody rather than just to Bill? Um, is, is it protocol? I, I've done it in the past. I just sent it to Bill and Jim in the past, and that's why. Well, that, you know, no. if you just sent it to everybody, I I'll, I'll that do that. I, I, I don't apologize. Have to worry about this anymore. Yeah. Bill's a busy guy, you know. Um, I'll, I'll make sure to send it to the board. Um, okay, we're set up to share. Okay. 
Um, all right. So as you'll see here, you know, you have the basis of your current bylaw and I really didn't change where things lived. I moved some things around and, and suggested that there. Um, but um, I'm not necessarily playing with any of the headings. I think there's only one section where we're amending some of the words and moving some things around. Um, but again, this some of the proposed language here that is to, to am be amended in this draft in this bylaw um, comes from the FEMA model. And so um, FEMA is going to require that when the maps are updated, that you will be compliant with, with the language of the new maps, as well as this new language that they're requiring for, for the town to be compliant with the National Flood Insurance Program. And I have a question regarding, it, it seems like the maps have been held back, held back, held back. I think we owe it to the people of the town if all of a sudden they find out that their property is now in the federal floodplain, they should know before we adopt this at the next uh, town meeting, the annual town meeting. So in the past, in 1974, we had hearings so people would know if their land is in or out and they had questions. Uh, there were some people that were questioning whether the the land belong in the in the FEMA floodplain, and uh, it was removed because the uh, the compelling reasons were strong enough to have FEMA remove it. So there there may be some error that the people are not uh, going to be aware of if we approve this. I think we're putting the cart before the horse, so that's uh, that's my concern. Is this bylaw adopting the flood maps? Or do we have to have a separate vote on adopting the flood maps? You're going to need to amend that when the flood maps are prepared, when the flood maps are completed. Um, I think the guidance that you received from your town administrator was to address them now. Um, I think that was that that probably is the only reason why you're addressing them now. Yeah. Um, in addition to maybe some some items that you've re been receiving, um, Bill from the state with regards to this new model that should be adopted. So there's a lot of hoopla that's happening with planning boards around the Commonwealth in figure out when these need to be adopted. So there's a race to adopt them by Springtown meeting for some communities, mostly in Eastern Mass because they have new maps. Um, but I know here in Western Mass, there are, um, you know, there we're all trying to figure out the, the nuances that need to be presented into this bylaw because there are some significant changes. Um, but to well, that, I, and that's I'm just kind more. Of, uh, I read the information that you said initially. I didn't read this up to date. Sure. One. And uh, uh, certain things uh, that were amazing to me is that uh, there's no grandfathering on this proposal. There's the, uh, the legal word abrogation, which is like a null, isn't it, Bill? Uh, similar, yeah. And it, it rescinds previous laws. New ones apply greater restriction than the local bylaws. So if somebody had trailers, I mean, uh, RVs there, uh, and they said they're grandfathered in. Grandfathering doesn't work in this bylaw. That's the word abrogation, as I read it. How about you, Bill? You're the lawyer. <laughs> where Where did you find that? Uh, I found that in section three. Abrogation rescind previous laws. Uh, permits required, including new construction. I'm not sure that carried forward in 
section three. I've not seen it. Okay, if no grandfathering on trailers. That's in, well, th these are my scratched notes. Uh, I'm, I didn't make it up. No, I'm not yeah. sure it's in there. I just didn't, uh, I'm just not seeing it in. Uh, it, there were four different uh, pages. Of, I mean, uh, four different documents that we had to read. In one of them, I think, I think um, Joe is talking about the the model document um, and some of the guidance coming from the state. So probably either this this model floodplain bylaw that or could be. Um, this PowerPoint. You're correct, Jim. That's that's what I was referring to. Um, so. So as I'll, I'll stop talking after this and let everybody else speak up. The way I can see it, we have to, uh, the trailers are gonna be the controversial thing because I take my trailers away, I own the land, blah, blah, blah. I hear that all the time and they have some, some, uh, some legitimate reasons to be concerned. So if you want a trailer uh, from this bylaw or the proposed bylaw, you have two choices. Number one choice would be to flood proof the trailer if it is allowed. Flood proofing means conservation problem, uh, a cement deck and substantial anchoring of the trailer so it doesn't float down the river, including straps over the top. Or you can go by the 180 day bylaw. The 180 day bylaw is what the town of Hadley has. That is, you can bring in a trailer, has to be a single axle trailer, and uh, it cannot be bigger. I think it was a 400 square feet kin or something like that. Yeah, it's, um, it's defined in um, the re recreational vehicle section. Yes, correct. And it has to be able to be uh, taken out by a pickup truck. Well, there are a couple of trailers down along the river that Harold's wrecker has to come in and bring it in and take it out. So uh, there's gonna be some substantial changes to the people. So I think we've gotta make sure that we inform people and have some kind of public hearing because this is gonna be difficult to present at the town meeting. Yeah, but this is really no different than what the town is doing on Route 9. I, I mean, the state is doing on Route 9. It's the same principle, they can do whatever how they want. No, it's a lot different because the federal government is involved. And if you don't comply, and I don't see that in here anywhere, you three things are sanctions against the town or the people owning the land. Number one, you, you cannot get federal flood insurance if we don't. Number two, uh, no federally insured lending institution will lend you money and all banks are, are federally insured. And number three, any federal funds apply to that area, and that's a pretty substantial area in town, uh, would have to be rejected. So we have some sanctions against us. And uh, So are you saying that this is a taking? It well, you make a good point, Michael, because there is something addressed in the previous papers that the Fifth Amendment, Bill, I'm sorry, <laughs> the Fifth Amendment does address taking. And sure is a form of taking. And uh, the legal opinion is that this is not a taking because a lot of people will be benefiting from this. So, uh, but they will allow to have one trailer per lot and it does not allow trailer parks, uh, several trailers. Yeah, that's what makes it not a taking, that it is not a regulatory taking is a regulation that by its terms prohibits any functional use of your property. And we're allowing you to have a trailer there. Uh, so that, mm -hmm. that gives you a use that is permissible. Thank you, Bill. Okay, and one, one other thing, I'm sorry. Uh, must have in our bylaw, the abrogation, the greater restrictions, uh, if we, have restrictions and it's in compliance, not uh, dovetailing into the state statute, uh, the greater restriction will go to the state statute. 
and we got to have a disclaimer of liability and the severability clause uh, all included in there. So, and it uh, can be adopted at least by the spring of 2022. So, okay, I've said my piece now. Okay, so Joe, I did a word search through this document that Ken sent us and abrogate and abrogation do not appear in it. So that's from a different document. The, the language that's presented in this slide, which is um, number three abrogation and greater restriction section, that's covered in 13.3.1. Okay. So that's in the, the new proposed section. Okay. So any anything in blue is to be added, um, obviously, the red strikeout are the, the items to be deleted. Um, and then there are comments from myself and from the coordinator with regards to addressing the bylaw. I think um, re in reality, everything is, it has been there. There's some minor changes to language um, and some minor re um, revisions to, to remove some items, but um, the biggest thing I think, and I, I mentioned this in the email, well, is, is this first. Um, one of the new items in this bylaw is identifying the um, staff person that is going to be the floodplain administrator for the town. Most communities are using the building inspector, building commissioner. So my assumption was that that was gonna be the case. Um, and I did um, share that that maybe that should be shared with um, Mr. Quinlan, um, that, you know, this is gonna be a new um, responsibility for him um, with regards to ensuring that development complies with the bylaw. What does floodplain administrator exactly mean, Ken? So that is like, that's like the last, um, let me, let me read it. Um, it's funny because when I was the, the planner for uh, um, a planner for the first time in Florida, I learned that I was a floodplain administrator and I had to sign off on all of the site plans, ensuring that on the site plan, if your base flood elevation in Florida, it, it required two feet above the base flood elevation. So each site plan would need to show that. Um, and then I have to go out on site to um, ensure that when foundations were put in the ground. Um, so there's the administrator. Is, is that defined any place in this bylaw? Um, yes, I think it's in the new definitions. Maybe not. No, it's, it's in the guidance, but um, if anything, we should um, have a definition for that. Yeah, I think we should put that definition in there so that at least it's written down someplace what the person has to do. Okay. I'm just going to add a note here. Okay. Um, so my understanding with this, the bylaw that you're presenting right now, Ken, is that the, uh, the present 180 days that we have for trailers, one trailer per lot is, is still going to be in there as written. It's going to be in there as written, but I think if you go, if we go down to that section, because that was the other big thing, um, the definition that the board has identified for mobile residential uses. Um, you know, I think anything with a foundation that's in the floodway, which, um, you know, if you were to look at an over, overhead, like a satellite photo and, um, and I forgot the street name, um, but Mitch's way. And um, if you take a, if you look at a satellite photo of Hadley and you look along the Connecticut River, you'll see a, 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 a line of trailers. 
Um, that's definitely in the floodway, according to the um, administrator. The thing is, um, and maybe it's been shared here or in the article, maybe it was covered that way, um, that you shouldn't be developing anything in the floodway. Floodplain is fine. And the ability to park a trailer with, with the definition that Joe had identified, which is something that can be moved at the onset um, and has those four particular things um, would be okay. It's not advised, um, but that location along Mitch's way is definitely in the flood way. Um, so where, where development in the floodway is almost strictly prohibited unless um, you can identify that it's not going to add to the 0.05% um, ability to impede a flood um, or to the, sorry, to the, um, the base flood elevation or, or flood water um, that um, they would be compliant. But I think the way that this is written and this is where the big question comes out is is enforcement because, and I understood based on my conversation with her that trailers don't necessarily require a, an approval by the um, zoning enforcement officer or the building inspector. Whereas utilities that people are trying to connect down to over there do require that. And that would imply that there is being development in the flood way. Um, and I think, you know, and that was just one example based on what I was able to discover looking at some of the issues on there. I don't know if there are other instances around Hadley where this is the case, where you're not, where, you know, you're not necessarily in the flood way and you're in the flood plain and, you know, you would be compliant with the requirements under the National Flood Insurance Program. But I think the way that <laughs> you've defined it here with the ability to, um, if we were to maybe just change this so that it's recreational vehicles are allowed in the floodway and you're requiring a special permit by the Zoning Board of Appeals um, with these particular prohibitions and these particular standards, um, then you would be compliant. It's, I think the definition is what causes consternation with the state folks because you're suggesting here that a mobile residential unit can be a mobile home house trailer um, and that is in direct conflict with the requirements of development in the floodway. Um, so I think trying to understand what needs to be changed in this particular section, if the, if the town still wants the ability to permit these types of trailers, these recreational trailers that are on wheels and that can move instantly in the, in the possibility of a flood, um, having that ability to, um, to do so um, and to, to permit that. Um, and, and having the town have the ability to understand what's being, um, how those trailers are, you know, using that particular parcel. Okay, so, so I, I see what the comment was, the mobile homes should never be placed in the floodway. And, and certainly we never intended that. We were, we were always talking about towable camper trailers, pop-up camper tents, um, RVs, you know, put, drive your Winnebago down there if you want, mm -hmm. but we were never contemplating anything other than something on wheels. Was that in the floodway and the flood? You know, we didn't really make a distinction about that at the time. I don't think it was on our radar. And if, I mean, if you can't put a trailer by the river, you're gonna bring it back uh, 200 feet or more in some cases, uh, doesn't make sense. So perhaps if we put those restrictions in that they have to be moved readily, uh, uh, 
we can, I think we can deal with that. It'll be probably politically a little bit easier to pass. Mm -hmm. I think we're just, I think we are really just talking here about, uh, <clears throat> uh maybe about just rewording some things to make it make our intentions clear because that's all anyone that was asking for at the outset Correct. why can't i tow my trailer to the river for the summer um and no one was talking about building and certainly i don't i think when this first came up no one was talking about trying to get electricity down there to run their air conditioners um it was purely you know, campsites, enhanced campsites. Um, and if, if we can just get the wording to reflect that, I think we'll be fine. I agree. I, I, I agree that we, we just need to, to move some words around or even remove a couple of words and make it more clear that we truly mean a portable unit. And, and they have the uh, the single axle trailer, uh, no more than I think. Ken, it's uh, 400 square feet. That's correct. So uh, it's funny because you identify recreational vehicles under mobile residential unit. However, there's this additional language in here that um, makes it a little more confusing. So you know, if we were to just say that you're allowing recreational vehicles under the definitions that are provided by FEMA um, and that are identified currently in the bylaw and that you suggest here in under mobile residential unit and um, permit that type of use in the floodplain and flood way with a special permit, I think that clarifies a lot of things. Um, but I, I wanna be clear and want to be to ensure that that is the intention that you know the planning board is is wanting to propose um, in this amendment is that 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 those recreational vehicles and under the definitions that it, it currently has um, that that is what is allowable with a special permit in the on those parcels. Yep. I, I think the if you get into the mobile residential unit and then the the points below it i think those are virtually copied from the fema regs yep so uh if it's a matter of changing its word what, what do they call it rvs or recreational vehicles they call it a recreation fine with me and take out mobile homes and house trailers um Hey, Ken, how many other rivers in, in Massachusetts have this issue before them <laughs> or, or, or towns that have rivers running through them have this issue before them? Any idea? Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't ask that of her. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's unique. Um, uh -huh. It's just a matter of the enforcement and understanding if, if there is a continuous applicability of what you have in the bylaw and the understanding that only trailer or recreational vehicles, which are built on a single chassis, 400 square feet or less when measured at the lar largest horizontal projection can be propelled, can be self-propelled or permanently towable. And this is all when a flood is to be, you know, is announced and that you right. need to clear very quickly. Um, and then also this language that you do have in here that is the 180 days, which is fine. Um, but there's this comment here, this, um, it's the floodway. It, and the thing is, it, it's the floodway because it's specifically in the floodway. So I think if we can determine and um, you're saying we can allow it if we uh, put the language in properly in the floodway, or it is completely prohibited by the by FEMA. It is the thing that I think is is weird here is because because it's a recreational vehicle, that sort of implies that it it is not 
permanent. And because all permanent types of structures in the floodway are prohibited, um, that because it's, you're, you're looking at a re recreational vehicle that can move um, at notice that, I don't know, I think it might be okay and I can ask her once we make these amendments um, to suggest that recreational vehicles are allowed with a special permit. Um, if she suggests that, if she suggests that language be stricken, I think she probably will and recommend that. Um, so, so Ken, before, before we get what off. We could, what we could do there is we could say permitted in the flood plain and but prohibited in the flood way. Would that make sense? Sometimes that's going to mean a long way from the river. So why would you want to bring your trailer on your property if it's going to be that far away from the river? Uh, that's what we'll have to discuss, uh, I think, in greater detail. Well, the if, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the state and the feds are saying you can't put it in a floodway, well, that's, you, can't, that's, you can't put it in a floodway. That's correct. Now, what if we need two-thirds to pass this and... The last time it was fairly contentious. And uh, what if it doesn't pass, Ken? Does, do we lose uh, federal flood insurance protection for these people in the floodplain, inability to get flood insurance, inability for the town to get federal money, inability to people to borrow from a bank? Do we lose those three things if this is not passed? I think what you're gonna get from the state and from FEMA is that you're gonna try to continue trying to make it pass. Um, they're not gonna wanna throw anyone off flood insurance. However, that is the, you know, that's the impetus for passing this, right? So the threat of losing the ability to get flood insurance and also, you know, um, <coughs> voiding out everyone else's flood insurance policies in Hadley, which I think she told me they're 80 plus, um, that, um, you know, it should be passed. And I, I, I haven't heard of any communities that have had an issue of it not passing um, because of that explanation when it's brought forward at town meeting. He it was, it's a lot easier to answer Mike's question. The communities, for example, if Sutherland, Sutherland does not allow it, that's our, our neighbor to the north and across the river is Whateley and Hatfield don't allow trailers. Northampton doesn't allow it. I don't think East Hampton does. So uh, I guess <coughs> all these people come from these various communities with their recreational vehicles. I have a question for Bill. Bill, if, if this doesn't pass the first time, do we have to wait a certain amount of, or can we bring it up at the next town meeting? You can bring it up every, uh, every six months if we want to. Okay. As long as it gets a favorable recommendation from the planning board on the initial presentation, you can okay. continue to bring it up. It only, that really only applies, Mark, if it gets an unfavorable recommendation, then it's gonna be a couple of year period um, it, it, it gets a little, a little bit complicated, but like okay. Bill, we can continue to bring it up. So m mostly it's the petition articles that are uh, frozen out for two years. Um, planning, you know, and even on the petition articles, uh, you can, uh, the planning board can vote to bring it back sooner than two years. And are we bringing this up in April? So then if it doesn't pass, we have two more tries? That's what we're working on. We have space <laughs> reserved for this for spring. Okay. Yeah, the, the key, Ken, is, uh, I don't know, Eric Carlson has a number there. Is, is he the contact person so we can get the map and look at the map at least? Well, I can, I can um, forward you the map. I do have the map. Um, I can actually quickly pull it up because I have it on my... You know, Ken, uh, certainly, thank you. I, I'd like to see the map and we can yeah. compare it to the old one. And, and the, you know, I know Bill DeWire has certain uh, 
concerns, like French Street, wasn't that where you were concerned? On one side of the the, the bridge there is floodplain, and the other side it isn't, and it's the same level? Correct. Yeah, so uh, there are discrepancies that we'd like to look at, and they need correction, be, I think, before we adopt it. So. Well, the thing that I learned, too, is that because she said that she visited, it was maybe her and Eric Carlson came out to Hadley. It might have just been her. Uh, came out it to Hadley in, on May 28th, 2019. And she met with a couple of folks, um, including, I think, some members of the planning board, I don't recall. Um, but definitely like the building inspector and conservation agent, town administrator. Um, let me just share this. Okay. So this is the, the 1980, 1978 map um, that is being revised. Um, Where's the flood panel? In, okay. To Ken, you're making the correct assumption. I think the uh, my presentation initially was in 1974 for the FEMA map, and it didn't pass the first time. And only until we were going to have the sewer line put in from the uh, West Street Common to the Coolidge Bridge that had a lot of federal funds attached to it, and it was going to help the town expand this business base. Uh, that was the, uh, the straw that made people pass it. And there were, and I noticed the word variance in, included in there. And they were, they would listen to, to me if I had particular problems. And for example, we could not uh, allow the uh, colleges to build their boat storages for their crew team, uh, unless it was out of the floodplain. And that did not make sense. I mean, you're gonna, gonna truck it a mile up the road. So they were, they were willing to work with us. That was the town or the, the colleges? Uh, the colleges were requesting uh, to put new, new uh, buildings in for their rowing. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, so he had, I had to call Washington to get it squared away and get a kind of a variance, an exemption. Yeah. And and the, so the, there are those processes that exist that would allow you to remove a structure from a floodplain if you're able to present data to FEMA. Um, it's called, yep. a, and I think um, I forgot the, the gentleman that usually is on the calls. Um, but he was suggesting, and I, it's an acronym, it's, I think it's a CLOMER, um, which is, uh, it is a letter of MAP amendment, uh, LOMA. Um, but that is a process that exists after a MAP is adopted. Now, when 2022 comes around and you have the folks from FEMA coming and saying, these are your new MAPs, the town will have the opportunity to, to talk about them. Um, to, to talk to the, the FEMA people to address any inconsistencies or thoughts that you have about some of the new properties that will be in the floodplain. Um, but the, you know, that obviously will come next year. So there are two um, panels and this is one of them. I would yeah. love to get, I would love to get a paper copy so I could, I'll definitely send you a digital copy. I don't know. The town may have paper copies. Um, Somebody should have one. Yeah. Well, Amherst seems to get get it. And, and... Um, but this so uh, this is a panel B. And obviously Is this the revised to... one, Ken? Excuse me? Is this the revised one? No, this is not the revised one. Okay. I, I don't have a draft of the revised one. I This is the 1978 panel. Okay, we have that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, so you have, yeah, so this is page one of two. This is one panel. And then you have another one, which is this one. 
The reason, Kim, I, I don't want to be a persistent pain in the butt, but nevertheless, when Jim and I went to the meeting at the Jones Library and they presented the updated uh, FEMA map, it was much more dramatically expanded than the present one. So that's why uh, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Yeah, I think that, and, you know, I think, Joe, you're, go, you're foreshadowing to what the process is going to look like when FEMA comes in with the new maps and you're going to have people from the community and maybe the members of the planning board that are like, oh, this doesn't make any sense um, or this right. makes sense or wow, it flood, you know, it, it's changed that much. But I think you're going to yeah. find that it is going to change a lot due to the increased flooding that's happening and increased storm events that we're having. For example, um, well, that may be, but Ken, the point is when we had, when they, FEMA presented the map at the Jones Library that Joe and I went to, mm -hmm. my mother and my uncles were alive during the flood of 36. And it was my grandfather's farm. Much of my grandfather's farm supposedly under the new federal floodplain would be underwater. Their farm did not flood in the 36 flood and neither did the surrounding areas. That's the point that Joe's trying to get across here. How do we content that? Because they're saying, well, elevations say this. Well, I don't care what your elevations say. Right. Relatives that were alive during the 36 flood, which is the largest flood event this valley has seen in the last hundred years, it didn't flood. 36 and 38. So they were both a hundred year flood of records. Right. You know, and, and th that's where we're, that's where he's keep Joe's kind of coming from. And all they're going to continue to say, well, by elevation, this is what we're saying. Say that recreational vehicles are allowed in, in these areas with a special permit. By, but it's one trailer per lot. That's what was not enforced in the past. So one trailer became a trailer park. So a couple of things about the enforcement question. Uh, could we, right now we have sort of a cumbersome system, which is honored by it's being ignored. Um, could we just require a special permit for being in the flood way and allow the building inspector to issue permits for floodplain placements and then have him enforce it. So be silent on floodway, but with regards to floodplain, have the building inspector. No, for flood, no, no, no. No. For flood way, special permit from the ZBA because it's a dicier situation. For flood plain, application to the building inspector. Still compliant with the bylaw the way it's written. Correct. Let's forego the special permit process for that. Bill, this is getting frightening, Bill. I was thinking about proposing relatively the same thing. In other words, not a special permit for everything because it would just be too cumbersome for a ZBA for all these trailers. So the building inspector, maybe you could get one like we do for the apartments and uh, that the building inspector can issue them in subsequent years. It's like the fire department giving you a burn permit or something like that. It's still checked to see that you had, uh, you were in compliance, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't have to go through the public hearing process, which right. No It'd one be does. Much, be, be a much speedier process. So, because you have recreational vehicles that would be allowed with a special permit in this, in the floodway, based on how we're going to amend this, um, I would say the first one should be a special permit. So you can lay out the rules and regulations, and then subsequently, uh, in the floodplain and the the floodway and floodplain. They're not even doing that, Joe. There's only, they're not even going through the initial process today. I know they're not. I know, I know they're not. So it, it's, it's certainly an enforcement thing that is, uh, been make, make, makes it a bigger problem from a 
passing at the town meeting. I think it'll be a much easier enforcement process if the building inspector has total control for the flood plain and the ZBA has control and enforcement process through the zoning enforcement officer through the flood way, like Bill said. Okay. I, I, I like Bill's idea. I, I like it too. Uh. Um, because I think it'll give the, the building inspector not so much ownership, but as much as a easier control of the process of the of the of the of the vehicles. Yeah, he can get telephone numbers. In in other words, you know, not all floods are in the uh, the spring and in the fall. The thirty the thirty six flood was a ice dam on the river in the spring, and the thirty eight flood was a hurricane, but. Oh. The 83 flood that we had, or 82 flood, exactly right. was in, almost in June. Yeah, the Memorial Day weekend. And uh, you're correct. So there has to be a, a method whereby people can be notified. Look, the water's coming up. Get your trailer out of there. Uh, that's So the building inspector could get, handle this. Give me your number, this, so we'll have it on as kind of like a speed dial. Texting, okay. you text everybody. Yeah. So a special permit for a mobile movable uh, RV, whatever, in the floodway for less than 180 days is what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. Every every yeah. condition that we have now, except that we are not requiring every <clears throat> RV to have a special permit, just the ones that are in the flood way. And we're gonna take mobile homes out of that definition. Yeah, we're just gonna track the definition of- uh, FEMA's. Of FEMA's definition. It, it, it virtually tracks the definition now. It, um, it just, uh, I think that might even have been how the definition read 25 years ago when we did this. So do we keep the 400 feet or does that go with the mobile home? Does that still apply to the RV? I, I don't it know. It applies to the RV if um, later on, and this was another comment um, with regards to definitions, I know that you had a warrant article that pulled out definitions. And so there are gonna be amendments to those definitions um, to figure out how we wanna do that. But FEMA defines recreational vehicle this way. You know, it has these four items right here. And um, if you're allowing that with a special permit in the floodway, with this, yeah, with a special permit in the floodway, they would need to be compliant and they would need to come to the ZBA, you know, with whatever they needed to um, ensure um, that they met those conditions. The, the big question, I think, and this is what Joe alluded to, was this one mobile unit per lot. Which it's an, an enforcement issue because we don't allow it. It's just happened. Is right. that right? Right. So if the ZBA is going to be permitting, and I don't know, you know, and I'm again using the example of that parcel that I saw the satellite photo and there were definitely um, trailers in a line next to the Connecticut River, um, that would be not in compliance because you had multiple trailers on one parcel. Um, is the, I don't know how you wanna address this. Um, it's, not, it's not up to us, it's the select board that has to address it. I mean, you're gonna pass this bylaw and nothing's going to change unless there's serious enforcement. Okay, Seri this, nothing's going to change. Right. Just this is all fluff. So the zoning enforcement officer, building inspector, is the zoning enforcement officer. Doesn't work for us. He works no. for the select board. Exactly. So that is part of the equation. That if there is going to be, um, they have to. There has to be support for enforcement. But I think we are making it easier to enforce by 
recognizing that ZBA root is kind of overkill um, for some applications. Right. And, you know, going forward, if it came down to, um, you know, maybe having some sort of a cap, there are, some, there are all sorts of different size lots down there. Um, if, if there's enough space, it wouldn't necessarily be a problem to have two trailers on a, on a larger lot. Maybe we need to have a definition of how, how much, how much ground for per recreational vehicle, but, um, you know, is, is Mitch's Marina in the floodway or the floodplain? Both, I think. Oh. Yeah, both. But he, so we're, we're saying that all those people that put their trailers down there every year are going to have to go to the ZBA and get a permit. No, they won't be able to get a permit because it's going to be one trailer per lot. And if this word abrogation is uh, going to be enforced. Well, uh, M M Mitch, Mitch is grandfathered for 10 not, RVs on his property. Dates uh, back to the 50s. But but he has way more than that. He's got 30, yeah. So the, the, there was another discussion point and I, this is what I asked her. Mobile park uses are allowed in Correct. the floodplain. So if you were to define mobile park uses and allow it for those parcels along the Connecticut River, ensuring that you know, you're also complying with the floodplain bylaw, then that could maybe you know, make easier the ability to not require you know, one, one trailer per parcel, one lot. Um, if you were to identify that these parcels are, have mobile uses or whatever, um, we could do it that way too. So we we get him off the hook by doing that. How how would we do it again, Ken? So floodplain. If you were to say anything in the floodplain, um, you know, because you you can say what the prohibited uses are and and some of the prohibitions. If you were to say that mobile resident mobile parks or mobile home parks, um, what well, we need to get the right definition. Um, but if you were to say those were an allowed use in, in a floodplain. It would be a seasonal mo mobile home. Right, park. because they'd still have to comply with those 180 days. Yeah. No, but the mobile home park, I, I think parks, they said were not allowed in some of the, uh, I don't know what it, which one. I just had my notes scribbled here. In, the ones that, well, we'll, I'll look it up. We'll discuss yeah, it. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll may ensure that. My understanding was that it's it's allowed, but again, there are restrictions. And the, the thing that gave the coordinator pause was, um, you know, the, the fact that she, you know, that the article suggested that permits were being pulled or trying to be pulled for, you know, electrical and, and some of the, the other types of things that you would go to the building department for. Um, and with that, that is directly in conflict with development in the floodway. Okay. Um, as, as I mentioned before. So, you know, for some people, Mitch's Marina is their summer Riviera. It, it's, yeah. no, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's very classic. It's, it's a it's almost class warfare on behalf of the state to deny a lower yeah. income person the right to have yeah. a little fun in the summertime. Well, yeah. that's the other side of the coin, Michael, is the fact that if all of a sudden all these trailers get down the river, they call them their home, if they're almost homeless, then uh, they should have federal flood insurance. So we've got to pay for their trailers because they're- No, no, but my moving. point is that we've got to find a way to accommodate people like Mitch, uh, Businesses uh, like Mitch's Marina. Yeah. Ken. I, I, I find that to be part of the charm I have like, every summer, I, I think. Yeah, but I don't think it's a class war because we're not trying to we're not trying to discourage them because they're undesirable. We're 
we're only, we're being you know having our wallet held to the our head because of safety because of things being washed away down the river and no 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 you, the, the the state is saying it's an issue of safety there's been no safety issues at mitch's marina probably since it's been there okay this is something the state is telling you well the, the safety issue is also is not so much getting washed on the river it's more the uh sanitary issues make right. sure they have proper sanitation that's mm. a big thing okay now ken in this section can we put something in there to prohibit permanent electrical connections from being installed or is that not really reasonable mm -hmm. in other words, if you if you allow this so-called mobile park we don't want to see electrical lines run out there you bring your own generator etc and you can have permanent electrical power i think he did that might be problematic because you get something like the Mitch's Marina itself, its structure, which is in the floodplain, if not in the floodway, does have power going to it. Right. But we want to make sure that the electric company doesn't run power to these homes, the RVs. Right. In the floodway. Anywhere, floodplain or floodway. Yeah, because you start, you, you, I think I see Ken's point or the state's point. When you start putting in, in telephone poles, you're developing. Right. And the impact of each telephone pole by itself isn't a big deal. But, you know, then you need transformers, then you need this, and then you need that. So, but I, I think a little bit to your point, Mike, um, the building inspector is quite aware that this is a problem that needs attention. And he's also realizing that there are issues. Um, you know, one thing we, we have ne haven't even touched on because uh, is docks. That's under Conservation Commission. Um, and the number of unregistered docks down there are, uh, that, that may be a bigger problem than the unregistered trailers down there. Um, and then the fire department has some issues, uh, with propane storage and, and the like. So, um, building inspector is getting it from all directions that, the, that something needs to be done here. And we're I just, think it's unfair to put this burden on him, really. Well, someone has to do it. He is the zoning yeah. enforcement officer. And, uh, you know, sometimes he's working with the fire chief or the board of health. Um, he's enforcing a number of aspects of this uh, I, th I think i think the i think the police chief might be a better enforcer than the building inspector i Show up with a badge he uh, well tom has a badge but he has been known to bring uh bring someone on a ride along okay when he's going into areas that uh that he's had trouble before okay In the meantime, Ken, thank you for doing this. This is a, this is not an easy one to undertake. No, no, and there's so much nuance, <laughs> and um, every community is different. And as you've mentioned, you've tried to put your hands around how how you're allowing these types of uses next to the river, um, but also being mindful that the town has a responsibility to ensure that it's still in the national flood insurance program, yeah. but also understanding what's happening over there through a permitting process. Yep. So by, by the nature of Hadley's coastline on a Connecticut river, um, it has some very uh, desirable type beaches along its length of the Connecticut river where some of the other towns don't have. I mean, Northampton, Hatfield has a little bit. East Hampton, except for the boat launch and the, the marina doesn't have a really lot of really great coastline. South Hadley has that little cove down near the uh, Hoyoke Dam, but it doesn't, a lot of its, its coastline is rock ledge. Whereas Hadley has some really, you start going from the, where the high tension wires cross the Connecticut River by East Hampton, and you go northward from there, there is a tremendous amount of nice beaches 
along its over what going to be six or seven mile length of the river. Uh, a lot of the other towns don't have that same unique features. And and Mike, we're sharing those with the people with the trailers. We're trying to yeah. make it work for them. To yeah, right. Yeah. As opposed to our friends across the river who have have sh slammed the door shut on them. But but you, you get my drift. Is that this is the this is a working man's summer, perhaps? You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I used to, when I had the boat, we used to go up and down the river a lot. And I learned a lot about the coastline in Hadley because I, I had a kind of boat that could go, it wasn't a deep draft. I was able to go farther upstream than a lot of other boats. And there's just a tremendous amount of nice beaches along the Hadley coastline compared to any other sides. And that's so one of the where that sand where that sand settles well it's, where it's, the, it's, cur it's, the currents are in the sand so you go to the other side it's, it's all it's the way the the, the the glaciers drop whatever they did in, in hadley and it's you know hatfield and Hadley, like i said they have some nice beach areas but nothing like what hadley has and that's why it's the way it, it's evolved into all the trailers want the people want to be there to utilize it anyway so. And despite appearances, it, we would do the same thing if it was Jeff Bezos out there. Yeah. My point is Jeff Bezos wouldn't be there. Yeah. No, that's right. We can't change that. So. Duly noted. I noted that Jeff Bezos' ex ex-wife donated $50 million to a little university in Texas called Prairie View A and M. Yeah, he, well, he's got nothing to do with the with the problem in front of us. So we're just talking about oh, him. No, here, but, but I just wanted to say that he's some good deeds have come out of what he's done. Out of his divorce yeah. funds, right? But, yeah. I mean, even, even the Connecticut River is heavily used. That I'm going back about probably ten or fifteen years when the Coast Guard was on the river patrolling, and they said there's more boat traffic on the Connecticut River from the Holyoke Dam to the Coolidge Bridge than there is on the uh, Cape Cod Seashore on a busy Sunday. It's <laughs> like wall to wall. They couldn't believe the boats that were on that river on a Sunday, on a weekend. You can hear their engines for miles. You got some powerful engines on that river. Yeah. Yeah. There was um, one additional question that I had and it's particular to um, I'm just going to share my screen one more time. Um, it's a small question. This 5.3 floodplain restrictions, it's currently in your bylaw. Um, I was wondering what the impetus for that was. Um, it was passed in 2016. Which one is that now? So 5.3 in a floodplain district uses otherwise permitted as set forth in section three may be authorized after finding by the Board of Appeals. Um, after hearing with due notice given that said use will not danger the health or safety of the occupants thereof, new residential uses are not permitted. That's the Hadley floodplain. That's the Hadley floodplain, okay. Right. So does this need to be described as the Hadley floodplain? I remember you showing me that map um, because I think this suggests that it's, oh no, it's not the same because it's the flood overlay district, right? Yeah, okay. All right. Um, okay, so I will make um, the changes with regards to the special permit requirement for those recreational vehicles and we'll, we'll redefine that particular section um, right. and I'll propose some um, initial changes and, you know, for the next meeting we can discuss those changes. I guess 
one of the other things, and maybe this is a, a question common for Jim, um, specific to definitions, how you want to address those. Well, the, we haven't adopted the definition section yet because that, okay. we never got to it at a town meeting. So just get me the revised definitions and we will simply put them in the definition section for the next town meeting so okay. we, we can adopt them. That's the easiest way. Because you're, you're, are you adopting it with removing all the definition sections and then adopting a full definition section? Is that your article? Say it again now? So you're removing each definition section from each of the sections, but then putting it into one section. And, and that, that's all being done to one article. Okay. Okay. Yes. So logistically, I'm a little unsure. The idea is that the um, definitions is going to be taken up as the first or second article of the annual town meeting. All of the articles that were uh, frozen by the quorum call are going to be at the beginning of the annual okay. town meeting. So we might be adopting definitions for a, uh, an article that might not pass. But will, the, will, will that really matter much? We gotta see what the definition look like, Bill. I don't know yet. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Like, yeah, there's some, there's some new definitions that will need to be added um, and some definitions that need to be removed. So um, yeah, no, if you wanna take a, an initial look at these or any context of what's going to be changed, um, that may be helpful. I'm not an attorney, but it seems like it would be better to have more definitions and which aren't applicable than to not have de definitions. Here's it again, Mark. Oh, I was just speaking to Bill's point. I was thinking that if we pass the definitions, but we don't pass the bylaw, that would be better to have excess definitions oh. in place than to not have definitions and have the bylaw. Except they'll just be hanging out there without it tying back to anything. Right. Yeah. But that won't be a real problem if they don't apply to anything, I right. don't think. It's not gonna hurt anything. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be like, the, the, to your point, it'll just be hanging out there doing nothing. Right. Okay. So Hadley's bylaw doesn't allow trailer parks period correct and never has we were, we, and we were, we were just talking about a temporary trailer park for something like mitch's we don't have a definition for that if in fact we're going to move forward on that we no, we don't and then let's look and see what the initial we got a, few, a little bit of time to run through this and make it right mike okay before we get too carried away on, on the trailer parks because that's that is an option down the road Okay. Well, that's a good point, yeah. And it may be trailer parks in other areas too. It, I mean, trailer park doesn't need to be a congested group of trailers. It can be five Tiny or six house. trailers on three yeah, or four from, acres. Yeah, from what you're telling, we, we've got plenty of trailer parks down there. We just don't see them. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Temporary trailer parks, I should say. I mean, you, without mentioning names, you got the you got Mitch's, obviously. And then if you go a quarter mile north of Mitch's, there is a significant number of, of trailers right there on that parcel. Uh-huh. By the honeypot? No, no, no. Not no, even further not down. Talking. Oh, Maybe. further down. Further down. Yeah. Right by if you go by Mitch's, there's a road. It's right. called it used to be, believe it or not, Middle Street years ago. <laughs> when the when the when the river got wiped out. Middle Street ran. Now, yeah, that's Middle Street, right, Joe? Correct. Uh, that was Route 47. M Middle Street ran from where the sewer uh, or, the, or the town garage is straight along the river all the way down to Hockenham. That got wiped out in a 36 and 38 flood. Where Mitch's is, that used to be Middle Street. Mm. 
actually, Jim, it was after that because uh, my buddy Ted Kosher and Joe Weinsick and John Callahan had horses and they would ride from there over the covered bridge to Mitch's Marina. So okay. that, that road was right in the middle of the river. And I think it was in the uh, 60s that uh, the Mill River cut through there. Didn't take the old way, but it nevertheless, yeah. it did go there and the river has yeah. switched. But anyway, mm. just, just north of Mitch's on that road before the river wiped it out. And in fact, the road, the road is still there, mm. except for obviously where the bend is. But about a quarter mile north of Mitch's, maybe not even, there is a bunch of trailers on somebody else's property. Okay. And that's way below Honeypot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways. You know, since this, since this town is going to have to start looking at this a little more, perhaps it would be a way to impose some type of excise tax on these. Well, it would it would be a file if the building you hear that so <laughs> well, that building inspector is going to be doing these annual permit grant things i'm sure he's going to have to charge a fee for all this stuff yeah you're, you're sure talking, you're talking fire department a uh, board of health um building inspector all doing inspections on these places to make sure they're in compliance yeah so Ken, um, is a is two weeks too fast to turn around? No, I we can. Have, we have a potential public hearing with the uh, heavy auto, but I don't know if they'll ask for a continuance. I'm, I'm guessing they're going to ask because they're 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 dueling with the state on drainage. Um, I can make the next meeting my second and fourth Tuesdays or what is, when you meet first and third Tuesdays and third. Um, are always clear um, so most of the time um, so I would be able to meet at the next your next meeting okay. that would be February 2nd and I'll send um, the entire board the um, the draft okay thank you thank you Okay. Was there any other questions? That's enough. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, my brain hurts. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, right. Ken. Thank you, you very have, much, you Ken. Have a, you have a great evening, and we'll see you on the second. All right. Ken, on second, second thought, the next time you have something like this, just send it to Bill and uh, Jimmy. <laughs> 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 it's a good one. <laughs> Ignorance right, have, bliss. <laughs> have a great evening. Thank you. Good night. You too, Ken. Good night. Uh, any, more, any more business? Well, Jim, just, uh, you know, you brought up the uh, Niedbala's Garage, the Russell Street Auto. Uh, perhaps for our viewing audience, some people think we're holding it up for a particular reason, but uh, probably explain the letter that you oh, we finally yeah, did the, um, Tom Reedy, on behalf of the applicant of the redoing of the uh, garage on near Ball's garage, um, we are not holding it up. We are granting extensions at their request because the state is telling them that they have to stop pulling the water from the driveway of the old Hadley garage into Route 9. And the Hadley garage has an opinion that they are grandfathered. And the state is saying, no, you're not. And so the garage and the state, DPW in Northampton, DOT, whatever you want to call them, are working on that issue. And the planning board is staying out of it. The only thing that we have said is that we will not grant a conditional approval to the garage until the state, until the, garage, the Hadley garage and the state come into an agreement because we don't want to 
we want to hold a stick over the head of the Hadley Garage applicant to simply say, you will comply with whatever the state comply, whatever you would, whatever agreement you and the state come to is good with us. We're not giving direction on that. Curb cut. The uh, no. curb cut, they said they were grandfather for the curb cut. But they got, they got the, the curb cut is another thing that they're, they're, they're working on the state, whether they, they have three curb cuts, I think it's three, and the state is requesting that they get down to one or two. And I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Um, they may be a bit more willing to bend on the curb cuts if the drainage is addressed. Plus they have some of their parking is located on state property. That's not right. a good allowed. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So I have nothing else. I, learn. I have nothing else. Uh, I was going to bring up that question that the realtor brought up, uh, but I think I will uh, put together a uh, email to town council. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think we're, uh, th this is thing, this will ne probably never come up again on this scale, uh, but I'm sure it's happened elsewhere. So uh, let's find out. Okay. Well, let's, let's hope that they can do something there because it really is kind of an eyesore, you know? Anybody have anything else? Nope. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Uh, second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting, is, meeting is history. Thank you. And thank you, John. I'll get you Good that, night. Mark. Thank you, Michael. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Good night.